we go. Hello, my lovelies. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, my lovelies, welcome back. Here we are again with the Tarot Lessons 101 and finally at our conclusion. And we are going to be speaking about the element of water, the Ace of Cups. And from the Ace to the Ten to the Royals of the Suit of Cups which is the element of water, usually symbolizing Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, water elements. And I want you guys to think of the cups as the heart of the tarot because it is essentially the heart of the matter, right? It speaks about emotions and water is a representation of emotion. The cups are all about emotion, in any of the cards, really, water represents your heart, how you handle things and how you internalize them. Think about what water does. It cleanses, it refreshes, it nourishes, and it gives life. It can also erode and dissolve emotion. You can gauge the amount and intensity by how close the figure is to the water, how they're interacting with it, and how much is in the card. The position of the water cards Tell us how the emotions are being expressed, a lot or a little, everywhere or isolated, controlled or wild. Inverted cards show up complete outpouring. The Ace of Cups shows a perfectly balanced cup held to overcome waters. The sun is shining, all is well. The Two of Cups is about coming together. The Three of Cups often represents sisterhood or people who are in your tribe. The four of cups is apathetic. The five is the morning. The six is coming from childhood. Seven has two main interpretations, temptation or idealism. Do you want it because you need it or because you just want it? Eight is about being stuck. I love the nine. He's so satisfied. The 10 of cups is the only 10 that I feel has a little to do, a little to do with excess all is well. I could literally break down each of each up, sorry, each of the cup cards to talk about love, but let's sum it up like this. The more cups you have, the more emotion is present. The more emotion, the more unwily it becomes. So essentially, like we spoke in previous lessons, aces are always the seed. It is the very beginning. It is the massive potential uh, within its suit. So from the aces, if you have a microscope and go deep into the ace, you will find from the ace all the way to the 10 of cups, to the royals, the page, the knight, the queen, and king, because they all live in the ace of cups. So when we speak about numbers, every number has a specific energy, a specific vibration. And like I mentioned to you, the easiest way to understand the cups is think about it this way. The more cups that are present, the more the emotion. And when we are filled with emotion, sometimes it could be a little too much. So let's dive deep into this. If you guys are enjoying these lessons, which is our final lesson for the Tarot Lessons 101, like, share, and comment. Don't forget, you guys can always go back and re-watch these videos. They are all in the place, playlist of Tarot Lessons 101 on my channel. All right, let's begin. Ace of Cups. This is the essence of emotion, essentially the heart of the tarot. The cup is literally overflowing with bounty and blessings. Also, the cup is a magical tool. The first chalice was a cupped hand, remember? The chalice represents the womb of the goddess in magical practices, similar to the Christian blood of Christ. This represents the bounty and promise of the goddess filling us with whatever liquid lies within. We bring this blessing into ourselves and our thirst is satiated. So like we've mentioned with the aces, um, they are all about new beginnings, new endeavors, blessings, and offer. Uh, the important thing is to take 
to take it as a, a blessing more than anything. This is about new beginnings, a new love, new job, new butterflies in your stomach because she totally flirted with you or he totally flirted with you. And the hope and excitement is completely overwhelming and makes your brain grin. This is about potential grabbing into hope with both hands and letting yourself bathe in the good vibes and positive emotional energy. It is, like I mentioned, aces are always massive uh, beginnings. It is, um, you know, like mentioned, um, extremely powerful. They are, aces are always blessings and good omens in any type of reading. But in a love reading, for example, could represent the beginning stages of getting to know someone. It can represent, um, or even if you're not dealing with anyone, it can predict, uh, predict future uh, encounter or connection with someone uh, that is willing to offer you some type of uh, some type of offering, some type of love um, peace, if you will, uh, some type of unexpected uh, romance that may ensue. It is all about beginnings. As we spoke about uh, the numbers, number one is always a new beginning. All right, moving on here, we're going now to our beautiful two of cups. Now, me personally, this is a beautiful card. It is a representation of duality. It is a representation of, um, of connection, true, authentic, genuine connection. The two of cups is, this is a partnership. I've got your back, you've got mine. This is a fantastic card to get for a couple because it truly is about coexisting and supporting each other. The cups are balanced, quite lovely, actually. This is the card I like to see for relationships when doing love readings for clients. The lovers um, could be just so intense, whereas the two of cups, there is nothing wrong. Uh, there's nothing wrong with intensity in relationships, but often they catch fire and burn out. This card, the Two of Cups, shows an immense amount of trust, compassion, and true partnership. This is the couple or pair of friends who high-five after everything. They have each other's back, and they are true a true team. In a relationship, it's the friend that you've always wanted paired with you, um, paired with the lover you didn't know you were always looking for. So again, like I mentioned, when doing love readings, Two of Cups always uh, speaks about a true, genuine, authentic connection. This is of the, you know, there's no I in team sort of thing. It's about building together. It's about genuinely wanting to connect and understand each other's nature so that you can fully support one another. Depending on the cards that are around, would we'll speak a little bit more about this connection. But this is a beautiful card. Like I said, it is about uh, reciprocation more than anything and connection, genuine connection, looking out for each other to the best of each other's interest. Beautiful energy. All right. So now we are moving on to the three of cups and the three of cups is also another beautiful card here with the element of water, the cup suit. And the Three of Cups, whenever I see this card in a reading, I immediately know that the person getting the reading has people. Why do I say that? Because this is about being with your tribe. This is about being supported, uh, being loved, uh, having each other's back. This is definitely someone that is not, um, though they may not always uh, be very you know, connected or very much um have their their own family present. This speaks about having unconditional love and support around you. So it's kind of that saying of, you know, not always, uh, what's that saying? Uh, blood is not always thicker than water. And sometimes we don't have ideal family members or an ideal family dynamic, but we choose as we grow older, we choose to um, pick our own family or make our own family with our friends, with our colleagues, with people that, you know, with life come into our life and become so important and, and engraved in our life that uh, we can't really see our lives without them. This is what that card represents. It is true friendship at its core. It is being or having that emotional support. Um, beautiful, beautiful energy. Even if their own family isn't involved as they could be, 
The three sisters are swirling around, dancing with their cups in the air and smiling and enjoying each other. This card is about love, support, silliness, and having an absolute certainty that someone has your back. Like I said, beautiful energy. This is very um, celebratory type of energy as well. Like I said, depending on the cards that are around, we'll speak more about that celebration or that feeling of being understood, being seen, being heard. Um, but it's a very beautiful energy. Okay, moving on here. Now we go to the four, the four of cups, right? And this is a very interesting card. I often see this card as um, people may be a little bit, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I may find it a bit challenging because it could represent a multitude of things. Um, of course, as you progress and as you practice more and as you learn, and get intimate with your cards, you'll be able to tune into your energy, to your intuition, and you'll be able to better decipher what the meaning of the cards represent, depending on the cards that are around. But in essence, the Four of Cups to me, when I see this, it's the card that represents meh. You know what I mean? Like, um, the this card can be defined by the word meh, like I said. Uh, the person is being particular because they know what they want, possibly avoiding an unsustainable partner or a job that doesn't fit them. Maybe it's a maybe it's best to sit under a tree with your arms crossed until the right one comes along. This card has been related to the uh, to the Buddha sitting under the Bodhi tree, not budging until the truth wanders along. He's so focused on his inner life that the cups are going. Sorry, that the cups are going ignored. So again, why do I say that this is a card that represents them? Meh, right? Like, ugh, it is what it is type of energy. Because this card, as you can see, it is a cup that's coming from the sky, that's coming from a cloud, almost as a gift from God, uh, being given to this person that's sitting under a tree. But they are so focused in how they're feeling or trying to internalize their lack of feeling, their lack of interest, their lack of enjoyment, their, you know, feeling numb type of energy, um, that they're so fixated on that, that they're not able to see and look up and see the cup that's being given to them. Um, so again, this is kind of like, uh, you know, the, that saying of, um, a person was drowning and the person looked up at the sky and said, you know, uh, God, you know, will you do something for me? Please save me. And then God sent a ship and they asked, you know, the person that was drowning, like to, you know, to get in the boat. And he was like, no, I'm waiting for God. Um, and then the boat goes along and basically dies. And then they go to heaven and, they're telling God, you know, why didn't you send help? And God was like, I sent you so many boats. Like, that's the energy. And I'm not sure if I'm saying the story correctly, but that's kind of the energy of this card. It's almost like when we go through life, going through difficulty, that we're so much connected emotionally to the situation that's happening, that we can really take a step back and really analyze the whole picture. We can't see past what we're looking at right now. We can't you know, we're not taking the time to look to the right or to the left, that right at the corner, you're about to give a turn and there is a blessing that's going to find you right there. This card is about, like I said, feeling numb. This card is about being very disconnected, um, not wanting to deal sometimes with certain things. Uh, this card, like I said, it, it its interpretation is amazing. This is a card that I'm very fascinated with. Um, because for every single reading that I've done for so many years, it always represents something very different. Um, but again, think of it this way. There is essentially God giving you a cup, but you're so fixated on the fact that you're trying to disconnect or trying to essentially you are disconnected and you're trying to feel something and you're so focused on the not feeling like, why am I not feeling? Why am I? that God is literally coming down and trying to give you a blessing and you're not seeing it. You're not seeing it because you are so distracted with the unhappiness at this point in your life. Um, 
So essentially, when you get the Four of Cups, the easiest way to see it is exactly as its depiction. It is a person that is not looking at the blessing that's right in front of them. Um, and they are, you know, kind of like a kid when they throw a tantrum. Um, they're so fixated on just wanting to get their answers or trying to understand why life is not exciting, yet they're not doing nothing about it. So again, like I said, you will find that as you continue along your journey of learning the cards and learning the tarot, every card, one card can have a thousand different meanings, but the easiest way to connect with this card is like I mentioned, just looking at the depiction, uh, trying to get a feel for what it's speaking, depending on the cards that are around. But this usually indicates to me in a client's reading that the client is not happy with their situation yet they're not really doing anything about it. So moving on, we go here to the Five of Cups. Then this is another card that is, um, it's a very interesting card because it is a representation of, you know, aspects in our life. Uh, the Five of Cups usually represents a loss. It represents regret. It represents pain. It represents, uh, like I said, a loss. Fives are always a struggle. Um, so there is a struggle that's going on here on an emotional aspect because we're dealing with cups. And you have three cups that are spilt. And this, per is, this person is so fixated on the cups that are spilled instead of looking behind him that he has two full cups. Uh, so again, it can speak about remorse or regret. Um, there is a bridge behind this person. If this person is able to, you know, pull back a little bit from their emotions and not be completely consumed by them, they will be able to see that there are two filled cups uh, behind them, behind him. And there is a bridge that is leading to a town or to a castle th that they will basically have the courage, the tenacity to overcome whatever this loss is, whatever this heart uh, heartfelt moment uh, or situation that they're currently going through, um, they'll get through it. So again, but because it's so fixated on the emotion of it, on the loss of it, on the spilled cups, that they're not able to see a ray of sunshine, basically. They're not able to see the ray at the end of the tunnel. Um, why? Because mostly they have their head uh, looking down instead of looking forward. So again, this is a very interesting card as well. Um, I call this card the maybe life card. And what I mean by that is oftentimes uh, this card can come up in a reading when, as an example, I'll give you guys an example. I had a client that when this card came up in their reading, um, we started diving deep into what was the cause and the root of that feeling of that loss, right? And the client was like, no, everything's fine. Everything's going actually quite amazing in my life, da 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 Then we get deep into like the emotional aspect of it. And it had a lot to do with the fact that they weren't able to move on from a loss that they had experienced uh, about 10 years ago. And when I see this card, it can mean that it's something that you're going through now, right now, in the moment, in the present, but it can also indicate, again, like I mentioned, regret. And regret is a nasty thing. And it is something that if we don't deal with it, it can go on to haunt us like for many, many years. And it happened that for my client, uh, this card was a symbolization or representation of the loss that they felt for a relationship that in their mind they had depicted or imagined and viewed themselves as like, that's the person that I'm going to marry, but they messed up. And when they messed up, that person loved themselves so much that they were, they knew what they deserved and they were not willing to put up with anything less than that. So they walked away. And though this happened many years ago, uh, that client recently had found this person on Facebook. And looking back, I guess 
it triggered them and it made them remember like the what ifs of life. Like what if I hadn't messed up? What if I would have treated this person right? What if I had reciprocated the loyalty and the trust and the love to them? So this is not just, like I said, it's not a card that could be something that you're going through right now. It could be something that you experienced like 10 years ago, but recently, or in, in this aspect of the present, you could have been triggered or you could have gone into this feeling of remembrance and nostalgia about the past. And this card will come up to represent that, to represent the, 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 the regret, the loss, the, the, that moment in time that everything changed and it impacted you and it marked something in you, um, that, like I mentioned, you could have dealt with that 10 years ago, but till this day, it is something that when you look back, it is something that still hurts. It is something that is still, um, difficult to think about. And I think we can all relate in that aspect. We all can look back uh, at our past and oftentimes, you know, have those feelings come up. Um, the feeling of what if things would have been different? What if, what if, what if? So to me, when I see this card, it usually indicates what if. Uh, it indicates to me that uh, there was some type of loss here. And instead of focusing on the blessings or how far, as an example, how far my client has come and achieving and growing so many things, that one aspect of their life, which is their romantic life, is something that triggered them so much to the point where now they're much more guarded. So this can be almost a reminder of that as well. Um, so yeah, this card can represent many things. Um but it can represent the loss of a loved one, like a physical loss, the mourning aspect and all its stages. Um, so like I said, depending on the card that follows or the cards that are around, we'll speak a little bit more about what's going on here. Um, so yeah, we're going to keep it moving here. We're going now to the Six of Cups. Now, the Six of Cups is a beautiful energy. This is nostalgia. This is the past. Uh, this is childhood memories. There's purity in this card as well. As you can see, the flowers are white, which is innocence. Um, this can speak about um, friendship. This can speak about friendship, whether it's now or in the past or looking to the past kind of when we look to the past and we have very beautiful memories, kind of romanticizing about the past. Um, but this can also indicate, of course, depending on the cards that are around, it can indicate a friendship or a connection uh, that starts to build off, off of genuine connection or genuine friendship. This card to me in a love reading, as an example, is a beautiful card because it does represent um the potential for this connection to progress into something more stable. Why? Because they become friends before they become lovers. It's the genuine connection, the genuine getting to know one another on a deeper level uh, before uh, the progression of that relationship. So it's a beautiful energy and a beautiful card. Um, it's also very, to me, it's very like the, the, there's magic behind this card as well. Why? Because when we are children, we are, there's no limits to us. There's no boundaries. There's no being put in a box type of thing. It's like your imagination gets the best of you and it runs off, your mind runs off of imagination. So there is a purity to that. Um, you're seeing life, you know, to, it's full potential. You're not tainted. You're not, um, you haven't experienced heartbreak, right? When we're young, it's like, there is so much potential. There's so the world is such a beautiful thing and such amazing things. There is a genuine and, uh, innocence in this card. So to me, it's very magical as well, because it does indicate, um, having no limits, really being able to connect, um, being able to connect or being able to see life through uh, 
how it was for you being four or five years old, right? That you would thrive off of playing and creating that, you know, creating these, uh, what's the word, creating these, um, creating these uh, games in your head, right? Like you were the princess, you were the king. There was like really no limits. Like I said, there is purity, there is innocence here. Um, versus the reality of life, you know, we experience um, natural disasters, car accidents, the fact that, uh, you know, we experience disease or the loss of loved ones, etc. Uh, this card is actually the opposite of that. It is all about uh, the beauty in life and being able to see beauty in life, um, being able to see uh, life through your child's eyes. Um, you being a child, not speaking about your children, but uh, the, the inner child within you. Um, so yeah, this is a beautiful, beautiful card. And when we talk about as an example, I'll give you guys an example. Um, when you, when your kids are growing up and you teach them about Santa Claus or the Easter bunny or the tooth fairy, um, that's what this card represents. It's not, it's not so much that it's not so much that we're lying to them, I think, as much as allowing them to live or believe in magic. Um, the people in our lives, uh, the fear and the pain as part of what we experience in this life um, is something that could be scary at times. And I think that there is, like I mentioned, I think that there is magic in this card because of the innocence radiating the joy the happiness and nostalgia that live in this cart drinking out of the garden hose leaving out cookies and milk uh lifting your feet when you drive over the railroad tracks uh all of these things are a defense against the seemingly undenying uh difficulty that real life is right uh or that as a grown person we go through difficult situations and we become tainted and it bruises our soul, all of that. And it's about embracing the joy of being a child, even as a 30 year, uh, 30 year old or a 90 year old, it's about holding tight to magic because that is the counterbalance to all the other things that are so terribly uh, serious and heavy in life. So again, depending on the cards that are around, we'll speak a little bit more about this, um, this uh, connection, this authenticity, this purity, this um, magical moment, whether it's, you know, uh, going to the past for some of you, it can represent going back to your motherland or going back to uh, your parents' home where you grew up and having those beautiful memories of what it was like to be, you know, a kid living in that home. Uh, this is all about nostalgia. This is all about the past or the connection to the past, uh, but also friendship more than anything. All right, moving on here. We are now with this very interesting character, the Seven of Cups. Now, the Seven of Cups is a card that I think a lot of people have it a bit difficult to pin down. And I think that that's the beauty of the tarot. The tarot is up for a gazillion of interpretations. Um, but the essential focus in this card is, are you, are you living in fantasy or are you using your imagination to help you ground the dreams that you have? Okay, so what do I mean by that? We have a depiction of a person with a multitude of options, right? Oftentimes, this card is a card that uh, people like to interpret as negative. Now, I personally don't see the tarot or any of the cards as negative or positive because they all are aspects of our life. And though uh, life may be difficult sometimes, there is beauty, absolute beauty in it, right? Uh, which is that we're temporary. The only thing that we are for sure with certainty in this lifetime is at the moment you're born, you know, without a doubt that death will follow, whether it's at a hundred years old or whether it's at 81 or whether it's at 21, um, 
death is part of living. It's part of life. Now, when I say that, the seven of cups to me is a representation of not necessarily negative or positive. It's depending the cards that are around it that will speak a little bit more about it. But to me, the the main question with the seven of cups would be, are your ideals, are they realistic? Or as an example, if you're chasing a dream or you're trying to make something happen, are you choosing to live in fantasy? Are you choosing to, um, you know, not deal with reality or the reality of things as a way of escapism? Or are you using that to your maximum potential to be able to manifest as an example? Now, I'll tell you guys a quick story. Um, I had a client that came to me that was extremely spiritual. Uh, they were on their spiritual journey. And this card came out with other cards that spoke to me about, okay, there are certain things that the client doesn't want to deal with. They don't want to address and it got to the point where the client was kind of hiding be behind their spirituality and meditation, often meditating as a form of escapism, as a form of like not wanting to deal with what was happening around that person. So that an aspect could represent, again, what is it that you're doing that um, is affecting you? or is affecting your focus, or is affecting the fact that you're not capable of seeing or experiencing blessings that are on their way to you because you're so focused in trying to escape the reality of what's going on. Um, this card can also indicate, you know, um, as an example, if the devil card would be next to it, it could represent the person that uh, has a tendency of some some type of behavior of addiction. Uh, and the reason why they do that is do this is because they're using it as a form of escapism. Um, but essentially, like I said, uh, sometimes our fantasies feel safer than reality. Sometimes it's easier to imagine what would happen if you stood up for yourself, if you had a better job, a better relationship, et cetera, than actually doing the work to make things manifest. A less lazy perspective is that visualization leads directly to manifestation. The trick is to step out of the wishfulness and take action before you lose the impetuous to try. It's easier to wish than try, but it's the tr it's the trying that makes things happen. So again, uh, the example that I gave you guys about uh, the client that was kind of using their spirituality as a form of escapism, the meditation, so that they don't have to deal with the reality of things. And if you are on your journey, as an example for a manifestation, this card is marvelous because it speaks about you really tapping into that subconscious, you really tapping and connecting um, to be able to make the reality that you want to experience through your imagination first, which is part of manifestation process. But again, oftentimes it's like I told you guys in the videos of manifestations, manifestations are not for the lazy. Why? Because it takes discipline and dedication. So there we go. <laughs> All right. So here we are now with the eight of cups. And like I mentioned to you guys, as we progress from the eight, sorry, from the ace all the way to the 10 of cups, the more we dive higher into the numbers, the more the emotions, right? The more confusion, right? Because that's what the seven of cups represents as well, confusion. So we get a little bit more complex in our emotions because the more our emotions are there, the more stronger they get, the stronger they get, the more difficult it is for us to control our emotions. And this eight of cups is a total representation of that. Why do I say that? Because the eight of cups uh, definitely does represent kind of like, um, it represents a multitude of emotions, as you can see here. And the figure is walking away from them and they're walking away from them in the dead of night. So the moon representing the night, representing the water element, representing emotions. We have a multitude of cups here, which are emotions that are being ignored because the character is giving their back to them. So there is something that they are trying to get away from, or they're trying to run away from or they're trying to ignore, they're walking away. They don't want to deal. They don't want to uh, step up 
and really check themselves in regards to the situation. I'd rather walk away. I'd rather go partying. I'd rather, you know, just turn up um, than to deal with the fact that I am, as an example, in a relationship that is definitely not working out. And because it's not working out, we're always fighting. And the more we fight or the more we are around each other, the more we fight. So I'd rather just not be there. I'd rather be at work. I'd rather, I'd rather do a thousand things than to actually address this, the serious issue. That's what this card represents. When I see this card in a reading, um, when I'm doing a reading for a client, it usually indicates to me they're trying to get away from something. And it's usually because they don't either want to deal with it or because it's an overflowing of emotions that, you know, it gets the best of them. It's too much to deal with. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, think of it as the hangover card. It's true, <laughs> but it can be brought in to include overdoing in other ways, like being a tyrant at work, being a party girl when you shouldn't, when you should be at home. It's kind of the morning after walk of shame card. You've somehow walked away from the important truths in your life and have to shake your head to knock the cobwebs out. It's the card that happens just before the client asks for redemption. There is nothing at all wrong with playing video games. There is so much wrong with using video games, uh, video games to escape your marriage, your parenting duties, or life. It seems that vices are... Uh, our vices, not because they are inherently wrong um, or inherently bad for us. It's because too much of it is terrible for us. So you can have one drink, but not 20. I could go on and on, but the main point is that moderation is the key in this card. All right, moving on. Talking about moderation, everybody, we have the nine of cups. Now, this is a very beautiful card. I love this card, you guys. And honestly, it can represent, like I said, all of the cards are have thousands of meanings. And as you progress and as you continue to practice and learn your cards, you'll get more familiar with them. But the Nine of Cups is all about gratitude. It's all about blessings, right? It, this person is at a point in their life where they are extremely content. They have... Uh, overwhelming, uh, you know, number of cups behind them. They're not concerned if one falls over. They're not concerned. It's like they, everything they've wished for, everything they've hoped for has manifested. It has come to be uh, the yellowness in this card, a lot of, you know, representing the sun, happiness, joyful type of energy. This is, uh, for some, it could represent the party card as well. As well, um, If the man seated in this card could speak, he would say, you know, I don't even have to look over my shoulder to count my blessings. I'm certain of them. I know that even if one cup, uh, one cup falls and spills, the other eight will be enough to sustain me. And I will fill them and I will fill that cup back up to the brim as soon as I'm able I am grateful. I am joyful. I am satisfied with life and with my place in it. When we talk about the nine, the nines, the awareness goes to all corners of our life. This includes happiness when everything is okay. I feel very strongly that when you are grateful for what you have, the universe gives you more to be grateful for. Um, not stuff necessarily, but good people, a safe home, and you know, enough. This card is not about being rich or having big puffy uh, shirt. This card is about being satisfied and having enough and even more so. It's about being grateful for what you've got. So this is about blessings. I feel like whenever I see this card, it's uh, gratitude and gratefulness. It is the universe continuously pouring blessings uh, upon you. And like I said, it could be a bit of an access card. Uh, as an example, depending on the cards that follow, let's just say you would get uh, the previous card, the seven of uh, cups with the nine of uh, cups, that would indicate to me that the person is overindulging in drinking as a form of escapism, as a form or defense mechanism. Um, 
But overall, the Nine of Cups is a very beautiful card. If you were to get, as an example, the Empress, the Goddess of Fertility with the Nine of Cups and the Ace of Cups, as an example, then you can be sure to look towards some type of pregnancy announcement or someone's getting pregnant or knocked up because it does represent the nine months. Uh, cups always represent um, months when we talk about time frames. Uh, so again, beautiful energy here. Now we're moving on here to our lovely 10 of cups. Now I love this card. Um, this card is amazing to get, uh, in any type of reading really. Um, but I think the bigger question here, when you get the 10 of cups is what's next. Um, and the reason I say that is because the beauty in the 10 of cups is, like I said, as we get to the topper numbers, like after eight, nine, 10, those are a bit of excess, a bit of too much. And when you start with the ACE, which is the beginning seeds, you're going on a journey, you're trying that new, you know, business, you're going towards achieving a certain goal. When you get to the 10, it's already completed, it's already manifested, or uh, you're already experiencing, you know, the benefits of that journey that you took. But the 10 of cups um, cannot really be seen in any type of negative aspect. I think the only question would be, like I mentioned initially, what's next? Because the 10 of cups is, com you know, being completely happy. It is about, you know, seeing the rainbow, seeing the blessings, truly being overwhelmed with emotion of happiness and contentment and there's children and it's like a perfect family everything is fine and dandy it's been achieved you are reaping the rewards i think the only you know essential question here is what is next why because it is our birthright to continue growing to continue challenging ourselves to continue going towards different goals and aspirations because we were here exactly for that, to experience, to grow, to expand. So again, beautiful, beautiful energy here. All right, and now we are going to our page of cups. Now, like I mentioned to you guys in previous lessons, pages are always messengers, right? Messengers that come back and forth, um, taking on a new journey, a new endeavor. Uh, page of cups is a very beautiful card. Uh, this page is a bit of a dandy in most ba basic decks with a big fluffy hat and scarves. Um, his hair is flowing in the wind and his outfit is just darling. The ocean behind him is smooth and inviting. He's got a little smile on his face and is giving the fish in his cup a bit of a side eye. Usually when a fish pops up out of my cup, I'm a bit put out, but this guy loves surprises. He's uh, the card of art and inspiration, of love, lust, and passion. If you can apply those feelings to anything in your life, that's the page's cup. So this is very inspirational type of energy. This is very joyous and joyful, uh, playfulness type of energy. Like we spoke in previous lessons, pages usually indicate to me teenagers, um, but it is definitely someone that is very driven to be creative, to be into arts or being very artsy and crafty. Uh, this is the, the person that thinks outside of the box for sure. Um, and they're just very playful and very endearing. And like I mentioned, the cup with the fish popping out, very, very spontaneous type of energy, very loving type of energy. All right. Moving on here with the Knight of Cups. So Knights, like I mentioned to you guys, we go from pages to Knight to the King. So as we progress and as we move forward, we gain more wisdom, more knowledge. Um, the Knight of Cups is not an exception. It is also a message, a, a delivery. It is speaking about um, emotions, right? Because they are the suit of cups. Um he sits in the quad jeans and a white t-shirt and a worn copy of, you know, the most romantic band ever uh, limping from his hand. And he stares out into the distance. He smokes, of course, and his dark hair is tousled and curly. He says hi to you as you pass by, 
but his smile doesn't reach his eyes. He looks sad and his sadness is on your mind for a for a while. Um, does this one make an impact? He is so romantic, I can't even stand it. So out of, you know, all the nights, of course, the Knight of Cups would be um, very romantic. This is a person, uh, this is a person that is authentic. This is a person that is genuine. It is someone that, as you can see here, there is water. It is someone that has experience. Why? Because they are in an armor. They are protected. They are guarding themselves, though they are guarding themselves, they are willing to do that offering or to take that step or to have the courage, right? To ask you out. Uh, this is definitely an energy of the romantic. This is someone that is a very endearing type of energy in a love reading. It would represent someone that is definitely connected to their emotions. It is someone that uh, often uh, has a huge heart, but not necessarily carries his heart in, in his sleeve. Why? Because like I mentioned, the armor, there is some type of guarding, though they are still willing to meet you halfway type of energy. Beautiful energy here. All right. And now we are here with our Queen of Cups. Now, the Queen of Cups could represent feminine energy. Uh, this is a person that is very loving, very giving, very nurturing. It is definitely the, it is definitely the, um, the empath, right? Uh, out of all the queens, this is the queen that is very much connected to their intuition. This is a person that can feel your energy. Um, queen and kings, as we progress, are always the most evolved, understanding that they are ruling a kingdom, that they are thinking not only of themselves, but those around them. And the queen of cups is no exception. The queen of cups is the energy of the mother figure that looks out for everyone, that makes sure that everyone is fed, that makes sure that everyone is clothed. This is a queen that is very mentally and emotionally mature. Uh, like I mentioned, because she does have one foot in the water, which would indicate being between worlds, right? Between the spiritual and between the earthly bound. So this is a person that most likely is connected or has some type of psychic ability. Uh, this is a person that, uh, is, like I said, is definitely a giver, um, but they are not necessarily um, automatically a giver, right? Unless they feel that your energy is worthy of their presence or is worthy of their love. Uh, this is the grandma energy to me. Um, grandma energy in the aspect of, you know how sometimes our mothers can be a bit, uh, a bit more harsher, um, only because especially if you're like the oldest, uh, they have such high expectations, right? And then as you, as your parents or your mother continues to have children, it's like, we have this saying, right? That our youngest one can get away with murder, um, because it's like, it's not that serious anymore. You know what I mean? That type of energy, but the grandma was the one that was always there for you. The motherly, the nurturing type, the one that would really take care of you and give you those smooches. Um, that's the type of energy of the queen of cups. However, knowing that we're not really talking about inverted because it's just the opposite of what it represents queen of cups in a, you know, in an inverted position, I think it's the most harshest of all the queens because it's a person that is extremely emotionally manipulative um, and a person that, yes, is gifted in, uh, you know, being able to uh, understand your nature or be able to feel your true nature, quote unquote, your weakness. And it is a person that will definitely take a stab at your weakness. Like they will take full advantage of that if it were inverted. All right, moving on. And we are here finally with our King of Cups. This is um, the spirit of fire with the element of water. So King of Cups is a representation of a masculine energy, right? And kings are always uh, the most evolved out of all the royals. It is a person that is um, about structure. It is about... Um, executing right this is a person that is very confident um this king is uh if you can see in the depiction 
as in comparison to the queen, the king is not touching the water element, though he is surrounded by the water element. So what does that mean? His foot being on his throne indicates that this is a man that has complete understood the assignment. He has understood his emotions and what emotions uh, could lead us to do sometimes. And they have learned to master those emotions. This is a person that is not easily manipulated. This is a person that is most definitely loving and compassionate that is in their nature because it is the water suit. However, they are more emotionally evolved, even more so than the queen of cups. The king of cups is definitely someone that is very much in control. They are compassionate. They are understanding. However, this is not a king that would allow you to manipulate them. Uh, as an example, like the king of wands, right? You stroke their ego and you can get on their good side. Or you go deal with the king of pentacles as an example, and you speak about their accomplishments and how smart they are. And, you know, with the king of cups, you can't do that. With the king of cups, you can try, but because they've learned how to master those emotions, when they've learned to master their nature, um, they'll be able to see through that BS. You know what I mean? Especially because, yes, indeed, the King of Cups is intuitive as well. Um, so it is definitely a very loving, it is definitely the partner that you want in a love reading if it shows up. It is a person that is showing up in your life and is saying, I am ready to love. Uh, why? Because they know what they want. Uh, they are a king, so it represents action. Uh, they they know why they're showing up in your reading and they want you and they're going to do what they have to do uh, to really sweep you off your feet with the king of cups. Of course, keeping in mind inverted would be the complete opposite. Like mentioned previously with the queen, it is a person that is extremely manipulative, uh, very dark energy can go from zero to hundred real quick. Um, so yeah. Anyways, I hope you guys were able to enjoy these lessons. I hope you learned much from it. You can always go back to our playlist and go through any of the lessons. They are all on there. I want to wish you guys the very best and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye.